On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to talk about why you might be wrong about skunked homebrew. Moment brews and various artists, everything from me to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and heat creation, doing the most. This video idea came about months ago when I posted to an online mead community about how I was doing one of my regular outdoor fermentations with Kivik yeast, and all the commenters decided to tell me how that was a terrible idea and I didn't know what I was doing and how I was gonna skunk my mead, which was news to me because I've done this many, many times with that recipe and never had skunked mead because I know what I'm doing. And I, <laughs> I know that's gonna sound a little bit brash, but I do know what I'm doing because I know why beer skunks and I know why mead typically doesn't. And spoiler alert, it has to do with riboflavin. So what is skunking? It's light struck. It is when UV light hits a volatile compound. In this case, it is the isomerized alpha acids in a beer. So those are alpha acids that have been boiled and they've gone through a transformation to become isomerized and become real bitter. And that's that delicious bitter flavor that we like in beer. And when UV light hits them, it can convert them into another compound. And that takes a lot of time when you're just talking about isomerized alpha acids and ultraviolet light. The compound that is created during this process is called 3-methyl-2-butene-1-thiol. Did I get it? 3-methyl-2-butene-1-thiol is commonly called 3-MBT. 3-MBT. And that's what I'm gonna say going forward in this video. And when you smell 3-MBT, you know it. And it's very, very chemically similar to the compound in a skunk spray that smells like skunk. In a nutshell, what happens with beer is hops are boiled to create bitter compounds to bitter the beer. And those compounds, when exposed to enough ultraviolet light or blue wavelength light, can convert into 3-MBT and start smelling like skunk. And in some types of beer, this process can be almost instantaneous. You can go out, have a beer on the patio at your favorite restaurant, and by the time you get to the last third of that glass, it might already be smelling skunky. But skunking is not so simple as homebrewed thing becomes skunked when exposed to light. It's not as simple as I can set this mead out in the UV light and suddenly it's gonna start tasting and smelling of skunk. It's just, it doesn't work that way. It involves three things, and we've discussed a couple of them already. It involves isomerized hop acids. It involves UV and visible spectrum light in the 350 to 500 nanometer range. And it involves riboflavin. Riboflavin? The reason I even own riboflavin is because of our glowing mead video that we put out last year. And in that video, we used riboflavin to create a mead that glows in the dark. And it's because riboflavin has a really special property where under UV light, it gets excited and it also emits its own light. And so we could use that in the glowing mead, put it under an ultraviolet light, and it would fluoresce under that light, essentially looking like it was glowing in the dark. And that property of riboflavin is what aids in the process of creating a skunked beer. Because when a beer with lots of vitamin B2 is exposed to UV light, it causes the B2 to excite and emit its own light. And that light has an impact on those isomerized hop acids and accelerates the process by which it converts the good tasting stuff into the bad smelling 3-MBT. The reason my mead that I've made many times and brewed in direct sunlight many times in order to drive the temperature up and really get some of those big flavors out of my Kvike yeast, the reason that mead doesn't skunk is because it's not beer. It doesn't have enough B2 or isomerized hop acids or UV exposure in order to skunk before I get it into the keg after its very short fermentation period. Beer can have a lot of vitamin B2 in it though, because a lot of brewing yeasts produce B2 
during fermentation and they produce it from the malt. So the conventional wisdom is that if light touches beer, it skunks it. And generally, generally, that's true. However, in the absence of vitamin B2, it may or may not skunk. To avoid the creation of 3-MBT and of course skunking of your beer, the easiest solution is to put it in brown bottles so you can just filter out the UV light that may act on it or keg it or can it or just put it away somewhere dark where the UV light is not going to get to it before you enjoy it. Now I can say all this and I can link you to all my sources down in the description, but wouldn't it also be fun to, I don't know, put this into practice? So we did. I boiled up some hops tea by putting about three quarters of an ounce of Southern Star hops into some boiling water. I boiled that for 15 minutes, then I removed the hops bag and I put it into three different bottles. One was a brown glass bottle, one was a clear glass bottle, and one was a clear glass bottle with riboflavin added at bottling. I capped them all and then put them out in direct sunlight for three hours. Then I invited Anna to give them each the sniff test and see if she could find the skunky hop water. Give it a nice big whiff and tell me what you smell. It just smells hoppy to me. Okay. So on this one, the variable was clear glass. Okay. Yeah, they smell the same to me. Exactly the same. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So this last one, the variables are the clear glass and there has been vitamin B riboflavin added. Oh yeah, this one's stinky. Yeah, what's it smell like? Um, I don't know that I would say it smells skunky, but it's... Maybe a little skunky. It's definitely not a pleasant smell. <laughs> it's definitely an unpleasant smell. But it doesn't smell... Like, does it smell dank? Does it might... Yeah. Maybe it smells like... Yeah. Marijuana? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and like a maybe a little bo -y. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it smells like weed. But you feel like there is a definite difference. Between oh yeah, these. these two smell exactly the same. This one smells different, for sure. For sure. 100%. And I didn't know what was gonna happen. So I don't make this video to get back at those commenters who spoke out of line telling me that they knew something that I don't. I don't, I don't know. I do, however, make this video to inform folks that maybe you see a post on the internet, you think you know what you're talking about, maybe just take a step back, take a beat, and Google it before committing to writing a comment. Because you'll save yourself a lot of embarrassment if you just study up real quick before you post something that is just factually untrue and perpetuates a myth. Skunked beer is largely caused by riboflavin, accelerating the reaction between UV light and isomerized hop acids. If you enjoyed this video, I'm a little soapbox here, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm not this abrasive <laughs> all the time, I promise. And of course, hit that notification bell so that way you'll be alerted of any upcoming content from our channel. I would also advise you to follow us on all the things and join our Discord community because it's awesome. I've shared my riboflavin knowledge there before. It's a fun place. You should check it out. Until next time, friends, I'm going to enjoy this not skunked and wonderfully hoppy hydromel. Have a wonderful weekend and cheers.